This slide is just a reminder of the differences between RNA and DNA nucleotide monomers. Nucleotides consist of the bases adenine, uridine, cytosine, and guanine in RNA, and adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine in DNA. Also, there is a 5-carbon sugar, ribose in RNA, and deoxyribose in DNA, and one or more phosphates. You're looking here at nucleotide monophosphates. Now these monomers are linked in condensation reactions to form either RNA or DNA. As you can see from this illustration, the nucleotides in a nucleic acid are linked by phosphodiester bonds, or more appropriately, phosphodiester linkages, the result again of condensation reactions. Note here that a nucleic acid has directionality. We say it has a 5' prime and a 3' prime end. The 5' prime end refers to the nucleic acid with a free phosphate group on the 5' prime carbon of the sugar. That's shown at the top here. The 3' prime end refers to the free hydroxyl group on the number 3 carbon of the sugar at the other end. By convention, we 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The ability of bases to form H bonds is, of course, the basis of the formation of secondary structure in RNA or the formation of the double helix. The ability of the bases in nucleotides to form hydrogen bonds, along with other evidence, led Watson and Crick to propose that DNA was actually a double strand of nucleic acids. We know now that A normally forms two H bonds with T, and C forms three H bonds with G in a double helix. But the potential of the bases to exist in different shapes, or tautomers, with different H bonding potential, made building the model of DNA, or the DNA double helix, interesting to say the least. So here are two views of the DNA double helix. The left image emphasizes, of course, the base pairing, showing A, T, and G, C combinations, while the space filling model, shown at the right, highlights the shape of the double helix. Now, the double helix includes a so-called major groove and a minor groove. Can you recognize which groove is which? And do you remember their functional significance? The double helix exists because it's held together by millions of hydrogen bonds that, while individually weak, act in concert to maintain a stable structure. We'll return to a consideration of the structure and functions of nucleic acids and uh, proteins as well several times in this course. I want to leave you with some observations about ATP. Of course, ATP is one of the four precursors to RNA synthesis becoming AMP when part of the chain. But recall that free energy from sunlight, or more directly from food, is used to make ATP. The energy in ATP, in particular in the phosphoanhydride bonds shown here, is then used to do cellular work. Here's the fascinating question. When and why were nucleotides selected as both the precursors to information molecules and as carriers of chemical energy. Was it a prebiotic selection, something that actually happened before the first cell formed? Was the selection simultaneous, or was ATP an energy molecule first, and only later an informational one, or vice versa? Attempting to answer these questions should lead you to interesting speculations about what the first cells may have looked like in terms of information and energy storage and retrieval.